all right guys welcome back to the channel in this video i'm going to be showing you how to make a custom hot wheels metal base but you're going to keep an original looking ribbit or mushroom post coming up all right guys so we are back now before i begin with the video I know they're mushroom posts, but for this video, I'm going to call them ribbits, just to be clear on that. Now, about five or six years ago, I made a video where I uh, show you how to open a Hot Wheels without damaging the ribbit. Of course, that method only works on plastic-based uh, cars. And what you use is a soldering iron to heat up the post and uh, you slowly remove I'll put a link up here I made an original video and then I made a second video with a uh, better tool and uh, after I made that video uh, a lot of the same kind of videos showed up so this basically is going to be another one of those videos where uh, People will get the idea, and um, most likely in the future, you're gonna see it repeated on YouTube without any credit being given. Now, I did not invent this method, just to be clear, but as of right now, what I'm about to show you, it's not on YouTube. Now, you're probably thinking, well, you just buy the rivet on eBay, blah, blah, blah. Well false uh, if you go that route you could tell their fake rivet from a mile away same thing goes for the red lines those rivets they look completely fake I will never do something like that because I mean why put a fake rivet if it gets, if it's gonna look fake when you lose the opportunity to open the car up and maybe change the color just something I would not do if you like it good for you uh, but this video is going to show you how to use an original ribbit so the car is going to look factory fresh now what are you going to need tools I have the two main drill bits here that we're going to use and everything uh, that's going to have a link in the video description below. This one, we're going to drill apart. And this one, basically what's going to do is make sure this one doesn't go to the side. So this one, we're going to drill a pilot hole. And then we're going to use this one. Being very, very careful. Because we have to do it without touching the base. Right? So I'm going to go do that. And I'll be back.
All right, guys, check it out. Now you see these outer marks right here. That wasn't me. That was the machine when it mushroomed the post and slammed against the base. Now this inner one, it was me, but that one gets covered and nobody's going to see it. Check out the front, same thing here in the front. This auto mark was created by the original machine when it mushroomed the post. Now, next step is that uh, I need to get that pivot hole as large as I can get it. So, I'm going to show you which drill bit I'm going to use for that. Alright guys, so for this next step, uh, I use this because it's what I have. 332nd drill bit. Not sure if you could also go by M2. So, here is the drill bit. Compare it to the other one. You see it's much bigger. And it's almost same size as the post. So, uh, I suggest at this time you use this one to drive that pilot hole a little bit deeper. That way you can uh, be more comfortable drilling with this one and not worry about going side to side. So I'm going to do that and I'll be back.
Alright guys, so I'm not going to speed up that uh, that video clip just so you can see how long it takes and you have to be very careful especially when you're drilling something that's this short you know you want to make sure you can go through now let's put this back together and let me show you something you can see that the post is still touching the chassis or the base. Uh, we can't have that. Have the same deal here in the front. For our next step to work, we, especially here in the back, we could basically cut that lip off right here and here in the front I guess we could cut right here and of course I'm going to be using cutting disc I'm going to have to get a smaller one of this and my Dremel and I'll be back alright guys check it out Why didn't I record this? Because I have to bring it all the way to my eyes or to my face to be able to see what I'm doing. And here's a tip. When you have worn out this, don't throw them away because they're perfect to do these type of jobs where you have to cut through the inside. That way you don't mess up the side of the car. And I also use these magnifying glass and also serve as safety glass. Uh, now you can see how we have it right now. Let's try this on again. Check it out. Look at all that space that we have now. Now we can continue with our next step. All right, guys, I am back. Uh, remember at the beginning of the video where I mentioned uh, another video that I made a while back where I show you guys how to open up a car without damaging the rivet? Well, you're gonna have to learn how to do this if you want to accomplish what we're doing in this video. Uh, here is one candidate, which I chose. It's one of those mini dairy deliveries, four by four, which I really don't like. And also it's perfect for this because it has a long post. It's gonna make my life a lot easier to explain. Let me zoom in a little bit. You're gonna need cutting disc with a Dremel. Of course, you gotta be careful. You gotta make sure you can handle and feel very comfortable using that tool. What you need to do is very very careful using the cutting disc eat away and take out material around this area right here underneath the lip making sure that you don't touch the lip right because you don't want to touch that now if you remember in the car we're working with we cut out this part creating a space now you know why once you remove enough material you can go ahead and cut it cut it off I've used this other one and here we have the rivets as you can see here I recently made a video talking about how some uh, cars have paint on one of the rivets and not on the other one Pay attention to that. So if you remember before we started working on this, there was one of the poles or a rivet that had paint. So whatever color I'm gonna paint, that front rivet has to have paint. I mean, doesn't have to, but you know, if you wanna stay correct, then it has to. 
So at this point, you're just trying out the rivets that you extracted from the other car. And you wanna make sure that they sit flat. Everything is good and perfect. Everything looks nice. Now, how are we gonna put this together? Here is where most people that are that are trying to take their money, your money, mess up. They usually use two-part epoxy. There's this one, which sets in six minutes, 24, 2,424 psi strength. They really don't like using that one. They want to make sure that car doesn't fall apart before they make the sale. So they use this one. Well, the strongest one, 33,960 PSI. This one takes up to 24 hours to completely cure. Now, something for you to be uh, keep your eye on, where they usually mess up is they put the base on the car and then they try to get glue or the epoxy on the rivet and then they try to put it and they slip and you get epoxy all over the chassis and now they don't want to remove it so if you're gonna buy an expensive car like this make sure you zoom in and make sure there's no residue of glue or epoxy that's where they usually mess up now how do I do it simple put the rivet if I'm gonna be using epoxy this is why I gotta find something Enough to zoom up. Sorry about that. If I'm going to be using epoxy, I need to hold that in place. And now I'm going to glue it like this and wait for the, uh, the glue to set before I do anything else. So I'm going to do that. But of course, you know, I like to use Gorilla Gel Glue because I'm not trying to steal money from anybody. This is going to be for me. So I'm going to do that and I'll be back. All right, guys, so before I forget, the other way to open up a car, if it's a car that you really don't care and uh, you won't want to learn how to do it with the soldering iron, then you get some kind of adapter for your uh, dremel and eat away around the rivet, take away the base and then slowly cut out the remaining plastic until you get to the pose. Now, uh, if you wanna practice, you can also find cars like this that are plastic. You can see the rivets are plastic. Usually the base is metal, the car is plastic. So look for where the pose might be coming from. So somewhere around here for this. And just cut it out with the the Dremel until you can remove the top and then remove that plastic rivet and uh, it'll give you an idea since this is plastic it'll be easier to uh, eat away around the the post to make it fit on a metal base so that should give you a good idea and uh, a good method to practice now this method it's all, all also useful to have this uh, Chevy uh, wagon here that was given to me it was a wheel donor and you can see that when they drill apart the post is damaged the base is some kind of damage but uh, remember that out there delivery now I could cut away a post cut this off and fix it close it back up and it'll look original of course before we do that we're gonna give it a new paint job that's something for the future keep in mind so that's another reason or another benefit of learning this method so uh, let's go back to our project all right guys I'm back so no paint same deal over here 
but check the base. As you can see, I uh, filled it in with the Gorilla Gel Glue and the baking soda. Not baking powder, baking soda. And then I cleaned it up so it will be flat. As you can see here. And of course, the next step is going to be to try everything on. All right, let me zoom out so you guys can see. So you got, got the interior here. Match it. And we have a winner. Check it out. Now, all I gotta do is paint this, the car, and I can use the Gorilla Gel glue. That's why I made the hole, so you can get glue in there, and it'll be everything will be stronger. Or you can use the JB Weld that I show you. I might buy that before this project ends and uh, do it with that. Not really sure yet. We'll see. So once you do that, you put it back together, you glue it. It's a good idea to hold it. Hold it like this. Wait five minutes. Or you have somewhere where you could compress it for at least uh, whatever duration the, the glue needs to fully cure. And you're gonna have a solid car back together that nobody's gonna know that you drilled out. So all right, give me a minute. I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this and I'll be back. All right guys, and we are back. So check it out, I was able to find some of the JB Weld. I think this is the 2500 PSI one. It should set in five or six minutes. So you dip a small amount. So you see I'm using a uh, cut, cut the tip of a Q-tip. And you wanna make sure this is mixed properly. All right. Well, make sure your hands are clean. Prepare this. All right, guys, we are back. Wait, that's, I don't think that's the same car though. Wrong car, put that to the side. Here's the project. So there's, uh, there were many hints during the video. Uh, leave a comment if you were 
if you were uh, guessing that I was doing the the candy striper. Uh, that casting was definitely not the proper one because you know even though it was a premium from a premium set the casting still had a lot of paintings and a lot of sanding had to go on but the important thing is uh, everything is perfect including the rivets of course the original has a chromed out uh, base or chassis I was not going to do that because once you polish metal you have to clear coat it for it to maintain that uh, chrome look and sometimes even if you uh, clear coat it it'll still get uh, some kind of tarnish you know it'll change colors it'll, it might get yellow you know so it left it original I'm not trying to fake anybody into into thinking that this is an original candy striper but there it is guys and like I mentioned in the uh, beginning of the video let's see how many uh, how many videos uh, people start making now with this method without giving any credit and there it is so if you're buying something expensive from somebody that you don't know, the lesson here is be very, very, very suspicious. Make sure you have somebody that uh, that can tell you all the details as to uh, how many lines you're supposed to have in the roof. I know because I counted them. Uh, Everything, you know, uh, the the details on the tires. There's a lot of things to go by to make out a, a, an original candy striper. So it is hot pink. Let me turn up the light here. The thing with the hot pink is that uh, it looks different shades of pink under intense lighting. So that's going to be it, guys. I hope you liked the video. Remember to subscribe and hit that little bell so you get all the notifications of all the upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. Peace out.